Happy long weekend, oil traders. It is uh, the long weekend of uh, Labor Day, and I thought we'd take a look back at uh, the week of August 28th through September 1st, um, which was an interesting one. Uh, lots of volatility, range bound within about, depending on how you look at it, a buck or two, um, which is, I guess, a pretty big range. Um, but uh, we're ending the week pretty much where we started the week, which makes it quite uh, unique to look at. Uh, considering that uh, I walked away with, um, I think it was about 1500 bucks um, in uh, profits. So if we take a look at uh, the results on my tradingjournal.ca account, you can see that uh, we took profits on the 28th, the 31st, and September 1st for about 505, 722, and 428. Um, so yeah, about, uh, about uh, 1500 bucks or so. And uh, I thought we'd take a look at exactly what happened, um, what I learned, I think, and uh, how I plan on trying to implement some lessons learned. Um, it'll, yeah, it'll be an experiment. Um, I started to do that uh, this uh, Thursday and Friday, um, so we'll see how that eventually works out for me. And yeah, you guys can come along for the ride and see if this adaption adaptation to my uh, to my strategy to my approach whatever you want to call it um, works or not at least works for now so what happened was we started out the week with a pretty significant drop from a high of about uh, 4760 to a low of 4620 ish um, and on that drop was my first profit taking of the week, um, which was a short sale that, uh, that I had been holding for over a month, um, 34 days, one hour there, uh, that I had purchased uh, back in Ju July 25th, I guess. Uh, it was a very small position, only 15% of the portfolio, um, but still netted you know, over $500. Um, so definitely nice. Um, and it goes to show you that you know, sometimes you do have to wait. Um, and that's why you can see that if I flip over to the portfolio page on my tradingjournal.ca account, you can see that some of my positions I've been holding for even, you know, quite, quite a bit longer than that. Um, 66 days, 63 days, 39 days. And the long position from crude oil price of 52 is now 135 days old. That one's brutal. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's still just 17% of the portfolio, so it's not really a big concern. And I do believe that we will see the um, crude price in the 50s again at some point. I don't know if it's going to be next month or if it's going to be next year, but uh, I'm in no hurry. So the next event was the rally back up. Um, so once we dropped, I what I did was I also purchased uh, long. So if we flip back to the results page, you can see that my second result was um, from a long sale that I had purchased on August 28th and then sold on the 31st. So that was bought on the Monday following the big drop and then sold on the Thursday following the climb back up. So here's the big drop. Here's Thursday's big climb up um, where I got out of it. And as you can see, there was a whole lot of volatility in between that I completely missed out on. And the reason that I missed out on it was because of my expectations and how I had been planning this whole kind of approach, which is basically that I look for changes of about a dollar or so, um, kind of, I'll, I'll take as little as 90 cents-ish difference. Sometimes it's much more depending on the volatility of the day. I just wait for it to settle. So sometimes I get away with a buck and a half or two dollars even change in between positions. But basically, um, as we so even though I bought the long position um, following the drop, when we climb back, <clears throat> when we climb back up, I was expecting us to climb higher. So I never got out of that long position, and then of course we dropped back down. Um, once we dropped back down, I was already holding that long position, so there was nothing else for me to do, and I had never purchased this short again. So I couldn't profit from that downswing. And then that basically repeated itself over and over about three times during the course of uh, the week 
where I just kind of had to sit and wait with that uh, long, where it wasn't going low enough for me to get out of the existing short that I had at 4590, and it didn't go high enough for to me for me to consider selling that long position um, for a reasonable profit. Um, so basically, I, I felt kind of stuck until Thursday came around and we jumped high enough that it was profitable to get out of that long position. So much so that not only did I get out of that long position, but I also um, began purchasing shorts. And that was basically because of what happened earlier in that week. Um, I don't know, I guess I could blame my frustration over the fact that I had missed out on so much volatility, but I decided to um, instead of waiting for that dollar plus gap um, to enter in positions um, adding to my short uh, positions at smaller changes, smaller intervals, um, it turned out to be about 60 cents changes, but simply taking smaller positions. So if we take a look at my portfolio page again here, you can see that I have these two new short positions that are um, almost two days old, but instead of being, you know, closer to 20-ish percent, um, they're about uh, 15, 16 percent-ish. Um, so they're not quite half, they're still, you know, a little bit more than half, but uh, they're placed at um, smaller intervals and they're smaller positions. And my thinking, um, the theory, is of course that if we drop back down, which is exactly what did happen on Friday, so on Friday we drop back down um, in the morning session, which is where, and I'll get to that in a second, where I purchased the, repurchased the same long position that I had sold on Thursday. So flipping over to the results page, you can see that um, the long position that I purchased on uh, Monday, I sold on Thursday following that big um, climb back up by the bulls. And on Friday, so flipping back over to the charts, when we dip back down, I was looking to enter in the long again, anywhere below 46.90 um, or lower. And we managed to drop as low as 46, I think it was 46.50 something, 46.56. I got in at 46.73, I believe it was. Um, and at that point, um, one of these long, uh, short positions that I purchased on Thursday, uh, this first, this second one was already um, in the money by two percent uh, because of that drop. Because I had uh, kind of entered in smaller positions at smaller intervals. So had we basically dropped back down and stayed at this level or dropped lower, instead of profiting on a long, which I did, and I'll talk about that in a second, I could have exited one of one or more of those short positions for a profit, and that's basically what I wanted to see in light of what happened earlier in their week. Basically giving myself more options um, should there be days of smaller volatility, smaller swings in the price of crude. Um, instead of staying low, of course, we climbed back up and ended the day at a point where it was over 2% profit on the long position that I purchased that same morning. So I decided to take it. And that's what you see here on the results page Basically, um, from Friday's uh, session, I purchased uh, the same day, September 1st, held it for just shy of five hours, and took it for 2.21% or $428. So that's kind of what I learned from the week, um, kind of missing out on that um, kind of smaller volatility and feeling frustrated by the fact that kind of my so-called rules were kind of getting in the way of being able to play these smaller swings which you know over the past months or so I would say have become more frequent uh, that we're seeing m more of these kind of 50 cent plus or minus swings rather than dollar swings and uh, that's limiting my ability to take profits so if you look at my uh, you know, performance longer term, you can see that it's very much based on, around the idea that you take intermediate profits along the way and that compensates for the kind of longer term unrealized position um, that 
I tend to carry at a loss um, because I'm basically waiting to exit those, those small um, intermediate positions. So if we look at my portfolio, that's why you see kind of this big unrealized loss position all the time because basically I'm buying these positions as we move. Um, I'm, I'm very much a contrarian trader. So as we move up, I add to my short positions expecting the, um, a reversal. As we move down, I buy long position ex expecting a reversal upward. Um, and uh, as we fluctuate up and down, basically I'm exiting those same positions um, roughly in the same way in which I entered them. Um, so I'm always carrying an unrealized loss. So, for example, looking at the unrealized loss at this very moment, you know, we're about, you know, nine grand in the hole. But if you take that in light of the performance um, over the long term, uh, over the past, it's now I'm in my 13th month of doing this approach, um, I've collected um, $53,500. So that more than compensates for the unrealized loss. Even if I were to take that hit right now, I'm still, you know, ridiculously up for the year and that's the idea so you know basically I pay for that loss within about two months um, and then I've got 11 months of profit in the bank um, again assuming that I wanted to take that hit which I don't so even if I don't buy anything else at this point crude of course will go either up or down which means that if it goes down I'll be able to exit these short positions that I entered if it goes up I'll finally be able to get out of that um, long position that I've been carrying for what is it over four months now so um, no matter what this unrealized loss will be that much less um, but that's kind of my approach and at least for now it's working so I'm gonna stick with what works and I'm not gonna fix what's not broken um, but it is a matter of adapting and right now what I'm seeing are these smaller swings so I'm going to adapt my approach to accommodate them. What I still have yet to kind of really f figure out and hash out is how to protect myself against the situation where we're seeing consistent <clears throat> unidirectional movement. So for example, if suddenly we start dropping from where we are, 47 and a half ish, um, and we just keep dropping and dropping and dropping down to 40 or down to the 30s, you know, how do I protect myself against that situation? I can't keep buying um, longs expecting the reversal if that's never going to happen. Similarly, if we just keep climbing and climbing and climbing, you know, and these things have happened before. If you take a look at the long-term charts, you know, you see these huge moves from for, uh, from uh, 40, here's $45 up to $52, right? So if you don't prepare for situations like this, you can find yourself in a really deep hole um, doing what I do. So that's always in the back of my mind to protect myself against that situation. And I'm still figuring out exactly how to do that. Um, but it, uh, again, is part of what I tried to do today, or I should say on uh, Friday, which was by entering in that hedge. Uh, so you'll recall that I had added these, so flipping back to the seven day chart, um, I had added into these short positions as we did this climb up and I was rather aggressive in doing so. And then on the first opportunity that we dropped where it made sense, we were basically um, not much higher than my entry price. I was already in the money on one short positions and approaching break even on the second um, of the two short positions entered on Thursday. It made sense to hedge at least part of that with a long purchase, which is what I did at 46.73, and ultimately took a profit on that on the same day. But that really wasn't my expectation. It was more so to position myself against a potential spike up to 48. Um, when we ended the day in the money on that position, it was good enough. And if we drop back down to 47 um, after the weekend, I'll just re-enter that long position again. Um, again, as a hedge, to the short positions that I purchased on Thursday. So that's a little bit of insight into kind of what's going on in my head and uh, how I'm looking at this past week as well as what my plans are for the week and months ahead. 
Let me know what you guys uh, think and how you guys played this past week. You can hit me up down below on the comments on YouTube or over on tradingjournal.ca where you can find more information on my portfolio trades and charts. Uh, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to stay tuned, and uh, I'll check in with you guys ahead of trading after the long weekend on Tuesday and uh, before trading sessions start here on the East Coast at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Until then, happy weekending. Cheers.